That I mean, that's a, that is an, another quantum shift in in the way that we uh, approach uh, filmmaking. From my generation, when I began, it was producer, director, and writer, and that that triangle of people would create the film. But now it's 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 a quad, or or maybe you know it, it has to be worked in some other ways. Now I think um, a lot of uh, a lot of people think that you're exclusively about self distribution, mm -hmm. but you you you're more about hybrid distribution. Mm -hmm. um, and if you're fortunate enough to get a reputable distributor interested in some way with the film that you've made, do you have any tips for what you should be negotiating in that particular deal? Have you got three top tips you could give us? I have two top tips in dealing with distributors. One is make sure the distributor is reputable. Talk to other people. Talk to other filmmakers who have used them before. Make sure they've gotten, you know, that they've liked the experience, that they've gotten paid, that they were treated well, etc. And number two, make sure that the deal makes financial sense. You know, and if it meets those two criteria, I think it makes complete sense because instead of reinventing the wheel yourself, these people are in this business every day. They have relationships with buyers. Why not take advantage of those people who have been doing this for years and have all that expertise? Why reinvent the wheel yourself? Now, this isn't to say that you still won't have plenty of work to do and that you still are not managing and being responsible for all of the rights to the film. This is probably a distributor, not an overall rights sale, but this is probably a distributor who's handling one section of your rights, say DVD rights. You still have digital rights, you still have theatrical, you still have all the rights available in different territories, so you still have to manage all of your rights. Right. But still, if you're lucky enough to get an offer on an overall deal and someone offers you, for instance, $3 million for your film for 20 years and they're going to distribute it properly and you spend a million dollars making your film and you want to go on and make another film, Sure. I wouldn't turn down $3 million, sure, sure. but that's because it's a reputable, you'd want to make sure that it's a reputable company that's going to follow through on what they say in terms of releasing your film, that it's a reputable company in terms of that they have a good working relationship with filmmakers and haven't just put films on the shelves and they've actually marketed the films in a smart and intelligent way, and that the deal makes financial sense. Hmm. So I think that, to me, the biggest overall note is that every film's different and that every film has a unique audience, every film has a unique distribution path, and sometimes that might make sense for an overall deal for some people, but most likely in this day and age, with anywhere from five to 17,000 films made a year, and maybe 200 to 300 of them getting into major sales festivals, and of those films that get into those major sales festivals, maybe 50 of them, acquired deals that make some financial sense, you have thousands, possibly tens of thousands of films that aren't going to be in that situation. And so you have to figure out how to release your film right. that makes sense. And then you're in the world of what I call split rights. And then you're assigning individual rights to individual distributors if you're so lucky and managing the rest of your sites and whatever you can't sell to a company that in terms of again, is reputable and a deal that makes financial sense, you're managing, then you're in the world of DIY and you're kind of managing those rights yourself. Right. So, I mean, what would you say to a zero budget filmmaker or a micro budget filmmaker making a traditional style narrative, maybe a thriller or a horror movie, making it for 10 grand, 20 grand, um, almost certainly, unless it's a, a fluke, it's not going to be picked up by anybody major. What, how should they approach self-distribution okay well this is <laughs> i know that's a massive question yeah we've got a whole day okay well that's let two two top tips then and then we'll round it up okay two top tips on that um <laughs> i would say well i'll say four things and this is basically takes two hours for me to explain and it's essentially the first section of five sections in the book but essentially that every film is different and the way to approach developing a distribution and marketing strategy is to look at your film in four different ways. First is to look at what your goals are from the film. And they'll be different for every different filmmaker and different film. The next is to really look at your film and what the qualities of that film are. The third thing is to look at your audience and who your audience is, how they consume media. And the fourth thing is to look at your resources, and your resources for distribution and marketing. And from those four, looking at those four elements, you should be able to put together a distribution and marketing strategy. Right. But you have to look at those different aspects and 
figure out what makes sense for your film and then proceed to the right. next level. And I guess that in those four steps, the one that is, is most difficult to, to really nail is, is the first one um, that you mentioned about goals. Because I don't know if that's the hardest one to nail. I think a lot of people clearly know straight up well, whether I, they I, want... See, I'm not sure people do know. I think some people say, yes, I really want to make money, but actually what they really want is glory. Right. And, and in their head, they've convinced themselves it's all about money. But well, I think fact, the key glory. thing is to know that you can't have everything. Sure. Especially with limited means, you can't have everything. And you have to prioritize because you'll very quickly need to make choices for the release of the, your film that is going to service one goal or another. And you need to know what those priorities are so that you can make the proper right. choice and that you stick with that for a while. Because if you keep on changing you know, your goals based on different deals that come along or different opportunities, you're going to end up shooting yourself in the foot over and over again and you're going to hurt the release of your film. Yeah. And of course, there may be split allegiances within the crew. I've just been working with a, a good friend of mine whose who's, uh, films just come out in the cinemas, and the producers are hell-bent on making the money back for their investors. The director and actors are hell-bent on getting exposure for their career, and there's been some conflict there about the, ex the way the film has been exposed. Mm -hmm. And there will be conflict there. <laughs> <laughs> so it's best to try to be on the same page, or then, you know, if... The investors, if you're in a situation like this, what I would advise, and the investors probably control the product, so they're controlling the film, then those people who are the filmmakers who want you know, more exposure should think about how they can create exposure for the film and for themselves around the release that the, street, that the investors are already doing. Right. I guess the message here for the inexperienced filmmakers who've maybe funded it with friends and family and they don't necessarily have those legal structures in place or financial structures is just have a really robust conversation with each other about what is important and let's all get on the same page right. and do that before you get that magical moment where maybe something's, your, your film gets some kind of traction. Yeah, and I would say, and don't feel bad if you think you haven't done this before because it's funny that I talk to really experienced filmmakers. I, one of the filmmakers that I um, did a live workshop at Slam Dance with, and I gave them homework of like, you know, this kind of homework of what are your goals, what are your, you know, who's your audience, you know, what are your resources? And they didn't, they finished the film they didn't realize until that moment that they had diametrically opposing goals. That the director had one goal and the producer had another goal. Basically, the director wanted to make another film and the producer right. wanted to make his money back. You know, and they didn't until that time realize that they had these goals in conflict. And they were going, wow, oh, we should talk about this. Mm. Okay, well look, my final two questions which I always ask everybody. Uh, what are the common mistakes that you see filmmakers doing over and over? I'd say the biggest mistake that filmmakers do is to think that someone else is going to come along now and sweep them off their feet, take their film, give them a check for a million bucks and say goodbye, we're going to do a great release of your film and go on and enjoy your life. Right. That ain't happening anymore. Right. That um, filmmakers need to realize that even if that does happen, that golden moment, any work that they do now is only going to help that or make that happen. The biggest mistake that filmmakers do is to not think about the distribution and marketing of their film while they're making their film, or to not consider it. Right. Okay, and final question, which I always ask everyone, is what single piece of advice would you offer a new filmmaker? It can be about anything, life advice, anything you want. Okay. My single piece of advice to filmmakers coming up is to think about how you can create a long-term career as a filmmaker and how you can create a long-term sustainable career as a filmmaker and to not just think about moving from project to project and just think about how this fits into your overall career path and not just the individual film one at a time. Right, okay, so John, people can get your book where at? What's... Thinkoutsidetheboxoffice.com Okay, and... and it's available as a PDF and a hard copy. I would exactly. personally recommend the hard copy because this is much more um, readable um thank you very much and then uh, you can dog ear it and yeah, underline to it totally. keep it by your bedside and then and they, they can come to your one of your seminars you can exactly sign it for them. exactly yeah. um thank you very much for coming uh, thanks for having us. me and hopefully you know we'll get you back in the country at some time in the not too distant future and and uh, use all that fabulous feedback that we've just got in the last 24 hours to to really get a whole pile of british indie filmmakers in the room so thank cool. you for coming brilliant okay. thanks chris thank you cool